I rejected religion at an early age. My parents were religious, but they weren't churchgoers, and they only made a half-ass attempt to brainwash me. It didn't stick. I can't tell you exactly when I outlogicked religion, but my earliest atheist memory was at the age of eight when my third grade teacher settled an argument between me and some other kid by affirming that there was two a God. Now, I'd say I was proud of this fact, but atheism is nothing to be proud of. Outsmarting a book that starts contradicting itself in the second chapter isn't very hard, and as I proved for many years after rejecting my parents' faith, you can be both an atheist and a gullible dipshit simultaneously. So I didn't go for the whole religion thing, but I was every bit as irrational in my puerile, new age, hippie, tie-dye, goatee, anything-goes, neo-pagan spiritualism. I may have dismissed the doctrines, but I still had a soft spot in my brain for ancient wisdom. What's more, I wanted the magic, I wanted the eternal life, I just wasn't willing to get them from a church. So I alternately identified myself as a Wiccan, a spiritualist, a Thelemite, or my personal favorite, a Pangean theologist. I read books on witchcraft and Kabbalah and chakras and high magic and low magic and herbal magic and color magic and chaos magic and shamanic magic and Anakian magic, and I read the I Ching and tarot cards and runes and palms, and I read Aleister Crowley, I read Raymond Buckland and Donald Craig and Israel Regardi and Peter J. Carroll, and I went to pagan communes, I met gurus, I went on silence retreats, I danced naked around bonfires, I called upon ancient spirits, I invoked undines, and deep down I knew the whole time it was bullshit. And don't get me wrong, the cognitive dissonance wasn't that hard at first, because I was getting laid, I was having fun, I was hanging out with cool people, but it got harder and harder the more I learned about this shit. There was never any substance, it never made any more sense. You know, there were never any deeper secrets the deeper you went, and there were never any results. My friends would all say, oh, you gotta go meet this guru, and when I do, I figure out five minutes in that I know more about what he's talking about than he does, and I've only read two books on the subject. I'd gather together with some covens for some big communal spell, and I'd happen to catch them on the one night that nothing happens at all. Or worse yet, you only know it's over because the most gullible ass in the whole room goes, Did you guys feel that? And as I'm going through this whole five-year acid trip of the soul, something else was happening too. Even though I wouldn't realize it for quite a while, I was steadily eroding the foundation of my bullshit, because I started to see the images that were being returned from the Hubble Space Telescope. And like practically everybody back then, I fell in love with these images as soon as I saw them. I was fascinated and I couldn't get enough. I wanted to know more about what they were. They, and, and More than that, I wanted to know about how we got them and what they meant and the incredible universe that they revealed. And it was slow and it was painful, but that right there was the origin of my love for science. Somehow all those underpaid, uninspired public school teachers had failed to instill any real appreciation for something as fascinating as everything in my developing mind, and it took seeing the universe in this scale for me to truly appreciate the wonders of human curiosity. But it sure made that cognitive dissonance a lot harder. After all, if science said what I believed was bullshit and they could back it up with pictures of the entire fucking universe, who was I to disagree? How could I cocoon myself in some arrogant worldview that places humanity in the center of it all when there were things like the Hubble Deep Field image to contradict it? You know, even the young religions had a multi-century head start on science when it came to the whole heaven thing. They're happy to tell you what it looks like and who's in charge and how you get there, but they never managed to take any pictures. We never glimpsed the earliest stars through the power of herbal supplements. We never saw a cloud of dust four light years across through proper breathing techniques. We never saw galaxies forming with color-infused water. You know, the methods and practices all these hippie gurus promoted had been around for centuries and sometimes millennia, and yet knowledge of their deep and mystical secrets had never managed anything as stupefying, as eye-opening, as even the lowliest of Hubble's observations. Hell, even the ones before they fixed it. Sure, you eat enough mushrooms and you get into a sweat lodge and you'll see all the bright lights and pretty colors Hubble has to offer, but there's nothing there. Just like every other silly little spiritual distraction, there's nothing there. It's all empty, hollow, meaningless, unsatisfying chicken soup for the brain. It demands that you suspend your belief even to the point of suspending your own senses. It demands you open your mind to the point where your brain falls out. It demands that you practice for years at something that you can't actually get better at. It demands that you nod along with every stupid postmodernist notion some yoga instructor blurts out because you don't want to be the only person at the party who's wearing incredulity. But science, as Carl Sagan said, brings the goods. You know, the appeal of all that spiritual mumbo-jumbo was rooted in a desire to be part of something larger, something older, but when I glanced at the universe through the eyes of a space telescope, I saw that science could offer me something that was larger and, and more profound than anything any New Age guru could dream up. And what's more, I didn't have to suspend anything. I didn't have to give it anything. It was tangible. It was real. It was provable. Unlike the truth that was offered by faith, science demanded nothing in return. And that's how the Hubble saved my soul.